All right, today's translation is brought to us by Shadow1333. This member has so many profiles and accounts, some of which can be found below. Well, they themselves are probably an amazing translator, but actually, I don't think they're the only one. So if we take a look, Wrecking Crew 98, then if we go to credits, that is a lot of people. You got like four translators, you got three hackers, it's like, this was a mainstream production and mainstream respect. So we've got Rain Poncho, Dark Samus993, Ganmi, the Majin Zengi, Rei Chu, Jorfo, Nestboy, and of course, Shadow1333, who apparently was important enough they get t billing roll. But I'm pretty sure all these guys, like, all kind of helped out too. All right, hello and welcome to Now in English. We're playing Wrecking Crew 98. Now, it's not too often that a game actually comes out during the run of the series. This is, in fact, actually the first time. And so we'll be taking a look at Wrecking Crew 98. Now, it feels like this is a new release. It feels like we are on the cutting edge of video game technology. And that's what I love so much about these video game translations, is it's so hard to make old games feel new. I mean, mostly on account of the fact that they are, well, old. They all released, like, 10, some of them, maybe 20 years ago. So it's time to look in a mirror and just maybe think, it's like, wow, how old have I gotten? But anyway, today we've got Wrecking Crew 98, which is, well, it's the sequel to the NES Wrecking Crew, it's, except now things are on the Super Nintendo. <laughs> you can tell it's the Super Nintendo because it's the same transition effect as, as the Super Mario collection for the Super Nintendo. <laughs> oh, that's pretty great. All right, help. How do I play the game? I've actually never played Wrecking Crew. Now, I hear it's a Nintendo game, a Nintendo Entertainment System game, so I'm pretty sure it's pretty easy. Oh, my gosh. There is a lot here. Uh, let's just fast forward through this. Uh, hold on. What is J Bash? Oh, it's probably a Jump Bash? Nice. <laughs> I don't have time for this. Well, we'll learn on the fly, like I always do. Ooh, save data. Wow, these loading screens are actually quite a bit. There's no save data. So that's that's one thing that's added new here. Like, of course, Nintendo game, it's like, it's not gonna have any memory, but this has memory. So there's a story mode, it saves your progress. There are various characters, multiple characters? Oh. Those graphics actually are very reminiscent of Yoshi's Island, but in the good way. Ooh, just in case you didn't have enough pixel art images of Mario, now you got a new one, and he's even got his own little hobo pack. <laughs> when suddenly, the plot to a game just attacked him. Oh wow, so this must be one of those weird transitional periods where like, they had just finished Super Mario World, they probably had just done the Super Mario All-Stars collection, and then they were sort of planning up to do Yoshi's Island, but they weren't quite there yet. But I think they had that art style in mind, they're like, ooh, let's channel this. So I guess to us, non-Japanese, when Super when Yoshi's Island came out, it was kind of like this whole weird, like, new art style. It's like, whoa, where did this come from? But I guess if we had gotten this game, hint, hint, Nintendo, release all your games everywhere, in every region, then, uh, maybe Yoshi's Island would have been quite so jarring. Although, it's still adult Bowser who's the villain. It seems like nowadays baby Bowser is kind of the villain du jour. At least he was Although I wonder if that's just because it's like a different universe tone or something. And you just know Big Bowser's all all behind it. But don't give me any spoilers, I'm still playing through it. Oh, I guess that technically constitutes a spoiler. Okay guys, sorry. I spoiled the fact that Bowser is the main enemy in every Mario game ever. Okay, that was, that was actually a little bit of a spoiler, maybe I'll... If I can catch it, I can edit it out. If I can't, well, then you, then you know just how much I pay attention when I'm editing things out. This is 
is actually a very slow cutscene, and the fact that there is no music is not helping things. Oh, oh my gosh, it's normal looking Wario. Oh, oh, I accidentally pressed the skip all dialogue button. That is unfortunate. What is not unfortunate is the gameplay starting. All right, we get to be introduced to this purple guy who he was on the um, how to play screen. So I, I would assume that he is a good guy. Also, what's Wario? The main character of Wrecking Crew? I thought, I thought it was some other people. But again, all I know about Wrecking Crew <laughs> comes from Super Smash Bros. 4, which is not a very good source of information, actually. But I think there's technically a Wrecking Crew stage, so there's bombs. And if you get hit one, you get knocked out, lose a life. Alright, let's let's do it. Oh, maybe this is where all the uh, hammers from Super Mario Brothers Bean Bean Adventure? What is it called? Oh, oh, it's just a puzzle game! <laughs> These are my bread and butter. Four combo. Check it out. Can you can you hit stuff in the air? You can! All gone are the days of Poyo Poyo. Now we can just indiscriminately jump up and down and smash things all around. Uh, what is the goal? Let's let's look at what my computer opponent is doing. Uh, he seems to think the goal is to break everything. So, okay, sure. Nice! Oh! Instincts take over! Uh... Okay, what do I get for my efforts? A whole lot of nothing. Maybe I should have paid more attention <laughs> on the options screen, or at least how to play the game. <laughs> I can't sneak over to his side. So what is his game plan? Like, what is he up to? Am I supposed to... Oh, okay. So you can move things around. Are we supposed to get the mushroom? Is there any sort of visual indication of what it is I should be doing here? Uh, well, no. Stuff just keeps on coming. Let's see. Oh, it's a trash dozer. Now I, I was paying attention, so I realized that came as a direct result of the opponent's actions. So now I'm kind of curious, what do they do? What happens here? Do they mess with me? Oh, they do. Oh! That is unfortunate. <laughs> I kind of like that action game aspect. Oh, okay, so you jump on it, typical Mario rules. Uh, it goes away, I guess. So I think what I'm supposed to do is make the opponent's board fill with garbage. Which makes my earlier techniques and actions Somewhat unfortunate because now. Oh, can I Mr. Driller my way through this? I guess I can't. Okay. Um. Hmm. This is not necessarily an intuitive puzzle game, huh? And then there's always that temptation to just kind of smash everything down. So. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, and then you hit a bomb and then everything just explodes, thus eliminating any sort of hard work. Okay, I... There is no way. Okay, I'm gonna go back to that control screen, and I'm gonna figure out how do I win the game. Oh, there we go. Game rules. Second from the bottom. It's almost like it's the second least most important thing about the game, right? The rules. Here, I will explain the game rules of the game in the most efficient way possible. The point of the game is to force your opponent into a game over. Got it. Then why do you have no mechanisms to compensate for the, if my board like fills up, or no, completely runs out of trash? 
Okay, you break four. Of course, it's a little bit harder than Tetris Attack. Okay, uh... I accidentally pressed B like some sort of impulsive fool. But, at least now I know how to play. And, I mean, just typical Tetris Attack rules. I guess, ignoring the fact that the way you control it is not at all like Tetris Attack. Well, uh, we we're, we do seem to be channeling a Dr. Robotics Mean Mean Machine intro screen, though. Which is kind of interesting. Why? Well, I was going to make a four the other way, but I'll take it. Interesting. So apparently blocks are sort of affected by gravity, but not necessarily. Oh, wow. Okay, this is, this is just tricky. How do you manage all of this nonsense? Oh, combo I neither asked for nor really deserve. Does that count? No, no, it doesn't. So, if I press L and R, nothing happens. If I press select, nothing happens. Oh, 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 okay, okay, I found the, uh, more trash button. So apparently X and Y are your, uh, send, send trash please buttons. Oh, baby. That just got exciting. more exciting for my opponent is the fact that his screen is filled with nonsense. Uh, that is, of course, affecting him negatively, right? <laughs> How's it feel to have your screen filled with tractor dudes trying to mess you up? Oh my gosh. Oh, I hate how there's like this whole aspect of platforming to get in the way of my puzzle bliss. It's... I mean, it's not the worst. It, it adds a bit of interest and intrigue to the whole process, but you can tell that it's not necessarily... It's like a reinvention for reinvention's sake. They're kind of reinventing a wheel, but then they decided to make the wheel a little bit square. Which, I mean, I guess that's... Square wheels are not necessarily the worst thing in the world. I mean, they still work. You still get from point A to point B. It's just... You get to point A from point B a little bit less efficiently. Wow, there is no delay between pressing the button and getting more trash. So if you are not careful, which I rarely am, then you are just gonna get a whole face full of trash. I'm impressed that they let you ruin yourself just so easily. I wonder what happens if you line up three bombs. Uh, woefully little, although it does make a satisfying chain explosion if you smash a whole bunch of them all at once, but, I mean, huh. This is, this is so strange. This feels like when I was playing Puyo Puyo for the very first time and I didn't really understand what it was I was supposed to do or what it was I was doing, and yet it was strangely enticingly fun. Of course, back then I would play against other people. And there was this one guy who was really good at Poyo Poyo, and that became my sort of guiding light for getting good at Poyo Poyo. It's like, I gotta beat him. You can't beat me in games. I beat me in games. And only me beating me in games. Come on. Come on. Is that it? It's been three minutes. Okay. Close. <sighs> well. Don't tell me it's best of three. Oh, thank God. Oh, my God. That would have been a little, a little too long in the tooth, you know? Beaten again by Mario. Yeah, it happens every time, Mr. Eggplant. You just stay down. Wow, there is a surprising amount of text in this game. Oh, wow. And there, are there alternate routes? Hey, wait. Deja vu. I'm obstinate. Yeah, well, I'm also nothing like before. I know the rules to the game now. <laughs> hey, why'd you stop laughing? If I'm the only one laughing, then it's just kind of awkward. Yeah, well, we'll see. Three minutes into it, we'll see. I swear... You know what? I can't even talk over this anymore. We'll just we'll just fast forward to the ending. I 
see, so those black boxes do not go away. So I suppose there's some sort of uh, detriment to poor play after all. Speaking of poor play, I have let that pile up quite a bit now. Oh, I see bombs. Bombs are the answer. Bombs are the answer to everything. Bombs are love. Bombs are life. Bombs take care of everything bad going on in your life. It occurs to me you cannot actually rhyme the same word with the same word. Oh, so there is a garbage mechanic whereby any garbage you... Well, if you both send garbage to each other at the same time, well, Poyo Poyo 2, then the garbage is canceled. Just, just like Poyo Poyo 2. So, I mean, if you're going to imitate any game, I would at least settle for imitating the best puzzle game of all time. You know, I just realized this is one of those weird Mario games where you jump with B. I mean, the controls are intuitive enough that it doesn't matter, but it's just one of those things that, like, you'd think by thinking about it, if, you'd think if you thought about it, you'd be a little bit weirded out. Ooh, that was close. Which is to say, a last. Well, I guess he wasn't the same old eggplant. Oh, it keeps track of your stats. Nice. <laughs> oh, are the branching paths based on if you win or lose? Nope. He's got to continue the old-fashioned way. H hey, that's somebody different. So, so it said no unauthorized entry, but it's like, which which one of us is trespassing here exactly? Uh-oh, I may have spoiled something again. Bowser, the bad game, bad guy of this game too. Hopefully I edited out the previous spoiler, but if not, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh-oh, in four minutes. <laughs> I don't think I can beat you in four minutes, but let's give it a try. <laughs> Look at this portrait he's just like staring off into the distance mario's like looking at him with a determined look in his eye but the koopa's just like i am a soulless mon automaton and i will act every inch of it hey i was using those blocks well at least it keeps the same ones underneath Oh, come on. What? It does change them. I mean, I'm getting nowhere on my screen. What exactly is this other guy doing? How is he sending me garbage, actually? Is it chains? Is chains the answer? Oh, never mind. I guess just by making fours, you can still send a fair amount of garbage. So I guess pretty much all you have to do is send them fours, which should sound easy, but it's not. Hey, oh yeah, that was a wrong call. -up. Well, now you gotta find out what happens if the Koopa, even the freaking Koopa, beats you. 
and it took four minutes. So Bowser's here, I guess. Oh, Bowser, he did it. He beat me. Okay, well... Oh, okay, so I can actually move around. Uh, I think this is the only reasonable place to go, but... Oh, you again. I'm sure he says the same stuff. Oh my gosh, it's already been three minutes. I've been so engaged in the epic duel we've been having that I... Well, first of all, forgot to blink. Second of all, forgot to check the time. Come on, four combo, do your deal! No, just pointless nonsense. I'm noticing a big problem in this game is you can't actually, like, choose to send garbage. You just kind of mess with them a little, which... Some of this messing with them is a little too lighthearted for my tastes. Oh, oh okay, good. <laughs> it was it was close on both ends, but evidently it was closer on his side. <sighs> nice. Two wins, two losses. What exactly is Bowser trying to do in this game that's so evil? Is he trying to, like, take over all of the construction sites? Ooh, secret hideout map. Okay. Well, unfortunately... Okay, we are going back to the main... Okay, let's check out that save data, though. Oh, cool. So it does... It keeps track of the save characters you've beaten. Nothing was deleted. Thanks for telling me that. Well, that was Wrecking Crew 98. Well, I'm a little bit sorry to say that I can kind of understand where Nintendo is coming from when they decided not to localize this game. In fact, they localized Tetris Attack, which is... How many times better a puzzle game than this is? I think one of the main problems with this game is you don't seem to have direct control over what happens. And so, I mean, okay, just in a control sense, like, you're controlling a character that makes stuff move and makes things happen, which in and of itself is already not, like, a great precedent to set. But at the same time, like, it kind of feels like when you send trash to somebody, you don't get to choose what happens with that trash. Now, Puyo Puyo, you send garbage to them, it's like, it is always garbage. No need to, like, choose garbage from a menu, garbage isn't randomly selected. You break a certain, com a certain point combination, you send a certain amount of garbage. That is set in stone. But this game, it seems like, oh, sometimes you'll send tractors, sometimes you'll move their stuff up, and it's like... That just really lends itself to being slow. And then also, like, the cumbersomeness combined with, like, a fairly harsh combo system. Like, I kind of get the impression that if you want to do some real damage to your opponent, you are going to have to do some pretty big combos. But the deal is, you just don't have the tools to make all those combos. Like, it's, it's fairly unfortunate. In fact, this is actually the same demo as what I just saw. But now I guess I can look at the purple guy's screen this time i don't know i mean i've got this one friend well okay you you guys all remember kevin from versus block breaker right we used to play like puzzle games all the time in fact i played Puyo Puyo against and that's where i learned how to play Puyo Puyo because he was just so darn good at it i had to bring him down to earth and so we play puzzle games every now and then and honestly i might just have to pull this one out and it's like hey hey kevin what do you make of it and he'll be like well, actually, Connor, I hate it because it involves action, but puzzle games involve thinking, and I can do thinking, but I can't do action. 
And honestly, I'm gonna have to actually echo his sentiments. I mean, the poor kid doesn't like Mr. Driller, which honestly makes him an affront to man. Mr. Driller is a pretty good game, but you start playing a game like this and it's... I mean, a game like Mr. Driller, yes, you're controlling the titular Mr. Driller as you drill down on the earth. And like, yes, it's sort of a puzzle game that you interface through by playing through as a character. But at the same time, like your move set is just so limited. Like, you don't you don't have to go anywhere really to do anything. You just go to the blocks you want to go. And because you're going down, it's like you're, you're almost already already you're almost always already where you need to be. Whereas this game, it's like to even rotate the lines, which seems to be a fairly important aspect of gameplay. You have to actually move Mario all the way to the left and then start cranking. And it just seems so cumbersome. Because it's like, then you gotta jump to break the things, and it's like, even if you didn't have to navigate, like, so you see some of those lines kind of like break, like, uh, okay. Some of the bridges, like, some of the bridges are temporary and they kind of disappear. And it's like, even if you didn't have it, it would still be a fairly cumbersome game. But then they included those bridges, and it's like, I don't, I don't understand what they're going for. It's, it's just kind of baffling. I don't know. Although it kind of reeks of, like, Nintendo's trademark game design, where they never make anything that's, like, truly competitive. Like, there's always some sort of mitigating randomness. So it's like, even if you're unskilled, it's like, you always at least have sort of a chance of winning. And so, I feel like they brought that mentality to this game. But I think they set it up where it's supposed to be like a hardcore, competitive, one-on-one -on -one puzzle game. But it, it doesn't feel that way at all because they took specific steps to like mitigate any sort of that hardcoreness. But, well, unfortunately, I can see why this game was not necessarily localized to English. On one hand, it's kind of a shame, because, I mean, the game looks fantastic. You put a couple pictures of this in Nintendo Power, you, you put the magic words, Super Nintendo game, kids would be all over it. Now, would they have enjoyed it? Well, I don't know. And, I mean, there's not that much dialogue. Heck, I mean, you could have told the Treehouse people, it's like, hey, just make all new dialogue. But, I don't know. Well, Wrecking Crew 98. Still, though. Even if the actual game itself was not necessarily a fun experience, just the fact that there are new games coming out and being translated, now that is super fun. And that is just something I look forward to. So I'm gonna keep on doing this now in English thing, I'm gonna see just what games are there that are, well, now in English. But unfortunately for this game, this cat's gotta scat.